Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's episode of Great Engineer, Terrible Driver, we are going to design a 1955 sports coupe in automation and hot lap it in BeamNG Drive on the automation test track. What driver score will I achieve today? We shall find out. So let's see what we have available in 1955. Limit down the year to our limit here and um, yeah, yeah, I see a few things that could be viable. Let's see this one for instance. That's a coupe. And so it's 2.6 meters. Uh, I, th I think I'm going with the small one. Like sports cars back then were mostly mostly like two seaters and I mean we make it a coupe. It's supposed to be nice and nimble because well they, they didn't have much power back in the day after all. So for the chassis what are we going for? Uh, chassis panel material. Uh, considering that I'm going to crash it a lot <laughs> and and I have to drive it. I, I think I prefer not to take fiberglass but it I mean that would be viable. Chassis type, yeah, monocoque, space frame is not really something, although you could argue that this one is being made in a, in a, in a shed, basically. That, that would allow for this, oh, that would be the only viable option then to choose space frame. Okay, galvanized steel for the chassis, uh, chassis type, yeah, yeah, that's all good. Well, are we going independent, independent? Of course we are. It is a sports car, and I think we are going all out, double wishbone. Handling is king for a car like this. Engine, oh, now it becomes interesting. Okay, what do we want to do for the engine? Hmm, I, I sense a boxer coming. <laughs> boxer six, oh yeah. Low center of gravity, boys and girls. Low center of gravity. Uh, how large should it be? Well, um, oh yeah, you see some new graphs up here. That is, that is of course all new in this version. It makes a lot more sense for the fill factor showing and all the sizes. It's nice. Uh, anyway, I don't think we want to go over two liters because of how much that would rev. And probably about square so that we can use both the internals for revving and the, the valves. So let's try to go about square with this one. Yes, under two liters. Who needs more? That is that's actually pretty large still. Let's try to rev it higher. Make it 1.8. And we don't want to spend too much on it. But in 1955, I think what would be reasonable could be an overhead cam setup with two valves. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a quick look. Uh, where do we do this? Here. Yes. Look how pretty. So pretty. And we're going full cast iron for everything. We make the engine pretty small. I mean, boxer engines are heavier than inlines and and Vs, of course. Especially Vs. But, I mean, I'm not going to put on an, uh, an aluminium head there. That would be terrible. All the head gasket explosions. So, here we go. Cast. That was the, the pistons, of course. So, uh, compression, uh, where do we start? 7.0, that's a good starting point. Cam profile, I doubt we need more than like 55 mid-range. And then for the carbs, uh, a twin two barrel? That's four barrels in total. That's, that's quite generous. Performance intake. And we go with regular leaded 92. Okay, uh, how about a, a ratio of 13.5 for the fuel mixture? And we tune it to be optimized for 4K RPM? That's pretty high already, but we are going to rev this thing. Yeah, let's rev it to something like 6.8. I think it can do that. Maybe the valves are floating before. So let's start with uh, something like 5.8. Tubular headers. Yeah, that's not overboard with uh, the tech, but very sporty. And just a single baffled muffler. And look at that. 
Oh, spot on. Our components can take exactly 6,700. And, well, we can rev it a little higher. But, oh, there comes the valve float. There comes the valve float. We are making an astounding 93 horsepower. <laughs> now, the engineering time for this one is pretty low and the production units also. So, I do want to push this curve slightly higher. I want to make use of our internals taking more. So, what I'm going to do here is up the quality. There, we have plus three. Yeah. Yeah, uh, plus four even. Hmm. Yeah, this is looking like a really, really nice sporty torque curve. But I do want to get 100 horsepower. And, oh yeah, we can do here. Oh uh, yeah, come on, no. <sighs> so close, 99. But we probably have some, oh, we have a lot of octane left. So let's optimize this. There we go, 112 horsepower. I think at this point I can, I can almost back off a little. That is, that is becoming scary. How about this? Still reliable. Uses less uh, engineering time and production units. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. 111 horsepower. Our testing bench says that everything is in order. The exhausts are not strangling us. It's perfect. So, okay, let's make the graphs disappear and check it out. Hell yeah, that sounds like a proper little sports car from 1955. So, the coupe version it is. Mmm, beautiful. Okay, uh, we should do the morphing now and later on the design. I'm not going to spend much time on the design because I'm a terrible car designer. I'm a good car engineer and a terrible driver. Okay, I think this morph just making the passenger cabin slightly smaller. Uh, it's looking quite neat. Yeah, oh, I like this look. Let's continue with this. This will be a rear wheel drive vehicle in longitudinal mounting. That means that the engine is sitting in here. Someone removed the filters. And for the gearbox? Well, there's only really one choice. Manual transmission. Four gears. Very, very high end. And first gear goes to 64, second gear to 101. That should be pretty solid for acceleration. Open differential. Radial tires. Very European style. Yeah, 1955 radials just about appeared. So that will be expensive if you want to go any for anything but very narrow ones. So how are we doing so far? 600. Wow. That, that is expensive. If we're going with 155s. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the handling yet, of course, but uh, 155s might be fine. Uh, that would be a 75, 65, okay. 65 profile, that is very sporty. It's possible back in the day, but only in rare occasions would they actually use that. Maybe you should make the tire slightly larger. And then put in... Oh, should we put in 15s? Yeah, that makes sense. Let's put in 15s, then we can fit in more brake power in then. Drums and <laughs> two shoe, two leading shoe drums. Yeah, all the power, all the braking power. The pad type of 50 is about right. Like normal passenger cars would default to, or should default to something like 30, 35. But for sporty cars, you can go between 50 and 60, I would say. Cooling airflow, yeah, we don't want to overcool this thing. At 50, it is just barely cooled enough. And that's good enough. Two seats, yeah, exactly. Two seats. Uh, it is a sports coupe, so we go with sport. And then we don't want to bore them to death, so... And it's not too heavy. Well, uh, 28.5 kilos for all the wiring, loudspeakers, and all the other things for, for the doors and everything. Uh, 20... 28.5. That's acceptable. Safety! Uh, 
Standard 50s. We don't need anything fancy here. Standard springs. And that should be it. Let's see. Oh, yes. Slightly oversteery until the very end where it starts to uh, become terminally understeering, which is great. That's exactly what we want. And my god, Garob, that is a solid design for a just first pick. Let's retune it a bit. That should make it holy. <laughs> wow. 161 in light sport. And sport, that is what we are aiming for. 163 market score. Yeah, that's not too shabby. That definitely is not too shabby. Let's go through and just see if we have tuned it somewhat all right. Oh, a bit more high speed than I thought we would get. We are doing 187 kilometers an hour. That is fast. 0 to 100 in 8.6 seconds. Yeah, solid. And, I mean, the tires are good enough. Maybe sports compound. H how expensive is this? Ooh. Yeah, but it helps. It helps a lot. I mean, our cornering is up to 0.94 Gs. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, for steering fast is also very controlled, so we don't expect too much oversteer at high speeds. That is solid. All right, this looks like a really good build, actually. But the brakes. The brakes are always troublesome back in the day. Do, oh, 51 meters <laughs> from 100 to zero. 51 meters. Hmm. Do we want to invest into larger brakes than this? I don't think they actually care. Well, we should try it out. Maybe they, they care enough for sports cars. I mean, these are all the sports categories. Uh, that this going larger actually helps. Yeah, it does. It makes it more sporty. Now we're down to 47 meters. Maybe it's even a good move to... Oh, holy! Wow! Yes, a bit of brake quality. Plus five? Yeah, I, I think that is somewhat reasonable. Somewhat reasonable for what tech we are using and what time period we are in. It wouldn't be too difficult to push this out. As you can see, it doesn't add that much to engineering time. So now for the camber. Uh, fine tuning. A bit of fine tuning. I want to get it to... Oh, no. Other way around. Um, maybe I should indeed go the other way. Can I get to 100? Yes. Yes, all the sport. Wow. That is a very high sports rating for that era. That must be one of the first proper sports cars you can actually build. Like back then, in the in the 40s or something, that would, that would be super difficult because of the limited tech available. But our engine is so nice. It really helps to have the boxer in there. And don't make the mistake to assume that more power is better. No, it isn't. You want to have this thing controllable. It only has 823 kilos right now. 824. That will be a really light white drive. Okay. Oh, that is looking fantastic. Uh, not, not looking fantastic just yet. Let me uh, design this thing and give it a name. Okay, for the naming. It's the Lexington. The Cougar ST. Uh, with the engine B655. Built in 1955. It's a Boxer 6. And it is the 1800S. That yeah, makes all, 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 all sense, all sense in the world. And now I have to, I have to get into stuff which I'm not quite as uh, competent as. But before that, let's have a quick look at the mark. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> that is some green right there, yo. <laughs> That's a good build. Well, the front already looks, uh, well, it, it looks like I designed it, which is not necessarily a good thing, but uh, yeah, we're getting there. It looks like a car. All right, the design is done. Let me show you. It is rather horrible. 
but it is a car. Yes. Oh, the rear is awful. <laughs> anyway, anyway, doesn't matter. It, it, I, I'm the engineer, not the designer. <laughs> okay, so beautiful, not so much car. En Engineering-wise, beautiful car. Now let's export it to BeamNG. There we have it, in all its glory. The export is done. But now, most importantly, we have to put it onto the test track. That is some mighty impressive stats for sure, but um, will we be able to handle it? That's another question. Let's see how well the uh, AI drives around here. It will definitely crash less than I do, so uh, let's have a, a quick go. A solid acceleration into the first corner, and we have up to 90. Now, ooh, dropping down to 55 kilometers now. And Caswell's carousel, how much does it have to slow down? Uh, down to like 80-ish. And now gathering speed. Oh, wow. Yes, 180, and just flat throughout, 182. And we are on the Fast start and finish straight, camshaft road, and it passes in 2.39.83. Well, first of all, we need to familiarize ourselves with the car, and how can we better do this than by the automation test track itself? We, after all, have to drive a hot lap on it later on, so uh, let's uh, spawn in here. And there we have it, the Lexington Cougar ST. Oh! Oh, nowadays we can even choose color. How nice. Uh, we are going to drive it in automation red. And what a beauty it is. Ah, look at it. But uh, okay, don't look too, too closely. Don't look too closely. The front is almost acceptable. So how am I driving this thing? Well, not, not yet. But um, how am I driving this thing? I have a G25 and I'm going to use my H shifter. So, uh, that is proper, proper manual. And I'm, of course, using the clutch. The only uh, difficult thing is to speak into the microphone because uh, that can't be close. So, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Some first impressions then. How does this thing handle? Let's have a look. All right, start. Uh, it is very quick from the line for an old car, that is for sure. And super tail happy. Oh, oh my god. So far, so good. Smooth braking. Oh, 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 holy. Oh, uh, braking stability is not so good. Oh, oh, okay. Say that. Say that. <laughs> My god. This is way too difficult for me to drive. Okay, a few bumps later. I think, I think we have to take it on. This is um, a, a difficult beast to tame for a terrible driver. Okay, one lap, and early noon, yeah, yeah, that's that's all fine. Okay, here we go. So I think we're ready. Uh, I will be a little away from the microphone, so I have to, to shout, I guess, as always. And uh, here we go, first try.
So far so good, Ban Hammerhead. Wow, that was clean. And the carousel. Yeah, slow down, killer up. Slow down. You're not that good a driver. Slow down. Okay. No oversteer out here. Yes. Traction. Waypoint. No damage to the car yet. Now the high speed section. And what are we going to hit our top speed? Uh, 170 ish. Oh shit. Slingshot. Yeah, I did lift off there. <laughs> Just slightly. So this is terrible for braking. Very, very slowly. Very, oh, oh. It just kicks you instantly. Oh, am I slow enough? I think so. Yes, good. Ooh, that was very delicate. And killer up chicane. Yeah, don't oversteer out of here. Sickle and now Adam's Apex. Uh, let's break hard, hard, hard. Yes, stay in third. No need to push it. Nice through. Oh, 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 no, no. Ooh, saved it. Full throttle. Cossack corner coming up. Also staying in third, just gliding up here. Yes. Okay, only one corner left. This is tight. Lamb's Hope, down in second. Yes, and now to the finishing line. Accelerate. And we are across the line in oh, just over three minutes. Huh. Okay. Well, we did it. <laughs> we did it. So there we have it. Back in automation. We have both lap times on our data sheets, and that would be my three minutes point two, and the uh, automation test driver AI that managed a two minute thirty nine eighty three, and that means we get a driver score of eighty eight point six eight percent. Well, I expected worse. Don't forget that after each episode you will find the automation car uh, for this episode down in the description below. There's a download link and I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.